Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. For more information on Anne and her work, please follow these links, which will also be posted below every video. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hi, Ost. Here we are again on a Friday. Yes. And um, last time we spoke about bacteria, um, the bacteria kingdom, so to say. Mm -hmm. and uh, vital, no, let's say bacteria as a vital remedy for patients. So we identified um, that the bacteria are not only intercurrent, like nosodes are not only intercurrent remedies, but they can also be vital remedies for patients. And we didn't really, I know there is more to talk about, so we didn't really finish up the topic. So I would like to come back to this and uh, give you the opportunity to share some more of your insights on this topic. So um, <clears throat> first of all, you already named a few factors yeah. that uh, we can use to identify a bacteria case. And I would like you to elaborate a bit more on uh, how we can spot the case and yeah, so that I get a better feel for this. Yeah, good. Because I felt also after the talk, it was not complete. So we mm -hmm. talked about um, the patient will have a lot of um, physical complaints, functional complaints, multiple diagnosis, no diagnosis really fits. Um, he has this uh, unexisting chronic state of mm -hmm. acute. He has this uh, elaborated talk on, on, on all his symptoms and all the things he does and all the things he avoids and, and his diets and, and and we have the idea it's all the pathology, it's, it's superficial, mm -hmm. uh, why doesn't he come to the, the, the crux of the case, you know, to the mm -hmm. heart of the being and then he said yeah but that is his being, his, his sensation is I'm sick, I want yeah. to healthy like everybody i want to be normal like everybody not a good citizen but just have a normal body with normal energy who is able to do the normal things mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to to um uh, achieve with all his restrictions and diets and and his uh, uh, focus on enough rest and whatnot mm -hmm. so we have health and disease as opposition we have the the idea of i'm a diseased person and i should yeah. do things to become normal it's not normal other people can walk so far i get exhausted other people can eat these things i get nauseous you know i cannot do what normal people can do uh -huh. that is more or less where we ended and the, and the feeling exactly, of, yeah. Yeah, feeling of being weak like i'm weak i'm not strong i'm, I'm born weak i've always uh -huh. been sick they will they will say i've always been sick since childhood, I was always ailing with it, this and then the other. I had lots of antibiotics, but not. But that's not all of it. You know, the, the, the real bacteria mind is very specific. And after seeing a few cases, I was able to define it as, and I even have, had to look in the, in the dictionary, because the word is there in our rubrics. It says obsequiousness. You ever heard the word? Yeah, in your book, I think. <laughs> That's when I looked it up. <laughs> I had no clue what it was. Yeah, uh, but it fits well when I looked it up, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's in the book Beyond Our Mind and Body. We have this uh, no salt case there, uh, the patient with the streptococcinum, you know, with mm -hmm. the gland case, let's say. And and she had this, um, what is it, observation? It's this kind of servile attitude, this kind of submissive attitude like <clears throat> say this so there's no question about 
is this a good idea or not, they follow. But mm -hmm. the thing is, they go from the one uh, therapist to the other, and everybody is bound to say something different. So the other doctor says something different, the opposite, and then she does the opposite. Yeah. yeah. And then they go to yet another one, and they said something completely different, and then they change again. And you ask yourself in the end, don't you have a mind of your own? You know, yeah. <laughs> can't you think for yourself? Yeah. Why do you follow contradictory um, advices? There are things that are suitable and things that are not. Some some advices they would follow for years without any result. Mm -hmm. Following, I don't know what diet because somebody said so, or it's the trend of the time, and and then they won't touch that that food stuff. Does it change anything? No, not particularly. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you could call it yielding, but it's 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 not really yielding. It's like they have no own will. And in the books, we find with some no thoughts, no will, or weakness or will of will. Mm -hmm. It is even in the provings, and that's what you see with your patients. It's like they obey, but in a way that they justify. You know, they justify. They're not. Oh, yeah, I'm a very obedient person, so I do what everybody does. <laughs> no, they. Even that reflection is not there. Like I am like this, and I behave like this because mm -hmm. that's not even there. And as a homeopath, you get confused with those cases because since there is no like an essence, like a, an own idea, an own will, like this is what I think, this is what I like. Since this is not there, they say a lot of things that other people say. Like, mm -hmm. they, they, what is fashionable, they will say, even when it's contradictory. And you get confused because you think, this patient, I can't get the picture. Yeah, it's only fact level, it's only superficial. They keep talking about all the details about their disease. I don't know what disease they have in the first place. And then you cannot fix them in one of your boxes. It's not a plant, it's not a mineral, it's not an animal. They mostly end up in minerals because mm -hmm. they say dimension cases anyway. Uh, and you think they're boring, so they, they end up in the second dimension uh, remedy, which will be mm -hmm. a minimal thing until you know better. And you think the confusion is yours. So they're, they're for homeopaths, they're very frustrating. Mm -hmm. and you know. And then you lean back and say, oh, I know this, that's a bacterium, that's clear. You mm -hmm. think it's you who was unable to make a coherent picture. Yeah, so it's not only in this area with um, following the advice, instructions from doctors or... Because um, I would expect this is also, yeah, something not so unusual that people just follow whatever the doctors say because there's still the gods in white. But um, it's not only in this area, then. No, no. Of course, when people have problems and symptoms, they they look for advice, and it's it's a good idea to follow the advice that you paid for, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that is not a strange thing in itself. No, it's mm -hmm. like they have no idea about it. They they keep doing it with, without result. They can do it mm -hmm. for years, and. Yeah. They can switch from one diet to another because they're very focused on diets and food. Food yeah. is very important for bacteria, mm -hmm. very important. So they will never leave the house without food or without being sure that they have enough food. Mm -hmm. I even had once uh, a Monora case and she was talking about all her travels and, and rucksack travels, you know. And so what do you have in your rucksack? Yeah, yeah it's heavy because you carry food, I think. If there's one thing you shouldn't carry. Yeah. If you travel, is a lot of food, yeah. unless you are in, I don't know, in the jungle. But she wasn't traveling in the jungle. I mean, mm -hmm. the chances that you get some food on your on your track is 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 big. So you don't have to. She she was not doing this kind of track, like not in the mountains for two yeah. days. Mm -hmm. But the food was the most important thing that she was carrying, the most mm -hmm. heavy stuff. And you know when you. You're a woman and you're not that strong, you know, you have to look for the priorities and it was clear that her priority was food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
So it's, so it's not, uh, they're, yeah. they're not questioning things, right? They're not making up their mind about things. No, it's as if there is no mind, as if there is no own idea. You will ask yourself, what do you think? What is your point of view? Mm -hmm. what, what, what did you discover? Whom do yeah. you believe, you know? Yeah. Sometimes they, we have a patient I told you about. She, she's a Buddhist, right? So she tells all kinds of things that the Buddha would say, some, you know, posture that you're sh supposed to take. And that will be confusing because you think how spiritual. But it's not. It's Buddha's mind. It's not hers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are trying normally to to find out what is the attitude behind this action or this statement that drove you. Yes. And in this case, it's very difficult to find it out. That's yeah. that's what I get. Yeah. It is. It was difficult, but she ended up in the hospital with some acute uh, episode, and she was looking at people actually dying because she was in the emergency. And uh, of course, we asked, "How did you feel? And what did you think?" And then we got the lecture of Buddha. Mm. You know, that was the moment. It was the clearest. And we always ask for like these crisis moments. You know, yeah, of the the things with a lot of impact. You know, what was in your life very important? Of course, if you're in an emergency uh, state or in in danger of dying, that's probably one of the things that they will tell you. Mm. And so if you ask, then how did you feel then? You would expect an authentic feeling, no? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, as I told you, the lecture of Buddha came up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see. Right. Um, so this is a bit more about understanding the, the mind, the mental side of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, So is this, uh, th this applies to, to all the Monera that you have seen, right? Yes, in different degrees, in different degrees. So this, this, at the first glance, yielding attitudes, you might think, you might think, to uh, Satila maybe, you know, a soft person, but it's not that relation you have with the patient. Even though they they will ask for your advice and they will follow your advice very strict because you said so, mm -hmm. so they, mm -hmm. they they are not able to think about themselves, which is um, of most importance. And what is the detail? So they will follow it meticulously, you know. But it's not yielding. The yielding is like <coughs> I want to have a good rapport with you, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no like there's no distance between me and you, you know. Uh -huh. I can it has a pleasing you. aspect. Yeah, yeah, the pleasing, the feeling with you, you know, that's a pusatilla like yielding. It's not that. It's a more rigid, if you want, a more distant kind of um, um, following your advice. And it's not, again, a parasite. Some are, but not all of them, bacteria are mm -hmm. parasites because the parasitic quality, you, you, should, you could also call uh, yielding, but that's really too much yielding you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you go into it the yielding is that intense that if you question the patient whether he says it or not the message is i have no say so even if they want to go in the right direction they feel they have to go in the left because somebody said or the person he or she is dependent mm -hmm. on goes to the left. He mm -hmm. has no say. So there is an idea, I want to go this direction, but I can't. And if you ask, why can't you? The explanation is, even if I tell them, they will disregard it. Even if I show my feelings, they will not take it into account or they will, they will Press me, or they will secretly change the rules so I don't know what is best. So I want to do uh -huh. my, I want to please others, I want to do what they ask from me. But they changed the rules, they didn't tell me, and and then they try to get rid of me. That's the uh -huh. parasitic feeling, you know. 
yeah, like, yeah, yeah. which of course is true. I mean, <laughs> if you think about it for one second in daily life, if you have a parasite, you try to get rid of it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the basic feeling of the parasite. So it's at the first glance, it's also yielding. Yeah. Yielding is the thing you have to differentiate. But there's a different kind of, let's say, pulsatilla yielding, or bacteria yielding, or bacteria parasite. Or parasite, whatever, no bacteria, but the parasite. Then the yielding is, like, of course, which is literally, yeah, my life depends on doing what the other does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can this also be confused now that you say this, and as we are already in the second dimension, can this also be confused with the second row, lithium or... Beryllium, beryllium, maybe. Mm, yeah, because you think about the symbiotic uh, relationship, right? This yeah, is the and following law. and being very dependent on what someone tells me or what someone says, and a yielding uh, attitude. Yes, but the second uh, row of the periodic table uh, has this symbiotic um, relationship, which mm. is a little bit different. It is like I am you. Mm -hmm. They are still one, like the baby in the womb. Yeah. Like you and me are one uh, organism. Yeah. It's not, I live from you while you try to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's parasite. parasite. Parasite is sometimes kind of bitter or angry. Mm -hmm. They're angry and bitter and 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 dignified because why do they do this to me? You know, yeah. malarial sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Why don't they tell me what uh -huh. I want? Why do they force me to to do this while mm -hmm. I don't want it? And then you think, well, then stop it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. they can't. Yeah. We've seen a patient once who was. She said, "My wife tries to get rid of me for many many years." <laughs> she has to divorce me for many, many years. And, and by the way, she was a lawyer. And I said, so why do you stay in the house? And he couldn't answer. Mm. He couldn't answer. Mm -hmm. And it was like the relationship was over for a long time. So why did he stick around? He couldn't tell. He said his, his wife was... The only thing she tried was to get him out of the house and to get rid of him. Yeah? And when we asked what went wrong in the relationship, it basically came down to, you know, it was a, a marriage because we loved each other and then she changed the rules. And then I couldn't fulfill her wishes and then she tried to get rid of me, she turned her back on me. That's of course from a particular point of view. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the second row is something completely different. They have this symbiotic relationship like one organism. Yeah, mm, okay. Um, so, this um, parasitic feeling, this applies to bacteria, yeah? Yes, of course, there are other organisms who are parasitic. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But I've seen it in, like, um, well, insects as well, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we have lots of parasitic insects, so that's yeah, that yeah, yeah. area where you find this parasitic quality. Yeah, yeah no, no, of course, no. Yeah. I was going to ask, uh, does this also apply to viruses? Not that I've seen. Not that I've seen. They, they are completely different, basically. Uh -huh. In the beginning, I thought viruses and bacteria is one group. Then, when I've seen more viruses and more bacteria, I would say that viruses have a different mindset altogether. They might mm -hmm. have this, at the first glance, similar um, pattern of complaints. That, that means they have some vague disease. You don't know exactly what's wrong with them. They have multiple diagnoses. <coughs> they have chronic states of functional problems. Mm -hmm. And nobody really knows what it is. And, you know, so in the beginning, you think, uh-oh. Manera. But then the mind is so completely different. And that's why we had to talk about mind in this yeah. sense more. Uh -huh. In the first, let's say on the pathological <laughs> level, it will be hard to differentiate. But the uh -huh. mindset of a virus, I found is, um, in fact, completely different. What they do is they want to know 
so it's a bit the, the contrary. They want to know everything about everything. Uh -huh. But not like a professor, but out of sheer curiosity. They're interested uh -huh. in about everything. And I, I once had a patient who said, uh, 18 years old, I think everything is interesting. Now, that's the contrary of what you hear most of the time of patients that age. And I said, oh, yeah, everything is a lot. What do you mean? And he said, roads, cars, bridges, houses. He thought everything was interesting while he was sitting <laughs> in the back of a car. And I mean, he was serious. It was not a joke. Mm -hmm. So interested in everything. I've seen patients with many, many studies, for instance. Why? And they don't even have to finish them because their aim is not to have a job in this particular area. Uh, they're not ambitious in that way, but mm -hmm. they want to learn. Mm -hmm. So they might even stop just before the end. Or they might have a diploma and never do anything with it. And then do something completely different. It's not the specialization of the first study. It's something completely different. And then again, something completely different uh -huh. because it's all interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they will try different things because they want to see different people of different social environments as well. So your chances are your chances are bigger when you go to different schools, different towns, different uh, social uh, groups. They want to discuss with about everybody about everything. Why? To know what another person thinks because and i heard more than one patient say so another might have a solution that i haven't thought about yet so that means his solution i can use i can add to my you know my toolkit yeah, yeah. and so in general what you get is this picture they must they must be brilliant scientists <laughs> maybe but they don't specialize because they seem open <laughs> they seem open to unexpected results Yes, but they don't have the ambition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a scientist um, ideally has the ambition to find out something, to explore mm -hmm. something, yeah. and and that particular thing, uh, this area of exploration, to understand it deeper eh? and maybe later extrapolate it to other areas. But mm -hmm. most of the time, they're quite focused on a definite. Hmm? territory that they will do research on while the virus is exactly is very open but he's not his aim is not to learn something new that nobody knew before at the contrary mm -hmm. he wants to know what everybody already knows he wants to know what is there to know because and that's his aim to be able to adapt to any circumstance and that's mm -hmm exactly what the virus tries to, tries to do or what the virus does. It's so adaptable, it's, it mutates very easily depending on the environment. And the people, viruses, they, they have this, of course, unconscious need to be like ready and able to adapt at any changing circumstance. It's uh -huh, fascinating. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah interesting how it gives uh, insight about the the nature of those of them yeah mm -hmm. okay um yeah so they might not fit very well in the same group of monera then not with the mindset like the physical the pathology, the, the way they report it might be more or less the same. Like they might say I'm, I'm weak or I'm weaker than somebody else or, you know. I heard this also in one of the books. One of the viruses said, the Epstein-Barr virus, you know, when I'm ill, yeah, I said, what do you do? I eat double as I used, used to eat. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I need extra fuel for my immune system to overcome my disease and I already need fuel for my you know, my system to keep working. So she ate double. You ever heard that? That a sick person eats double? <laughs> not when they're sick, not really, no. No, no. And that would sound to me more virus than bacteria as well. Mm -hmm. Like eat themselves healthy, eat a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Okay, so this is a, a bit of a differentiation between viruses and bacteria. Mm -hmm. What we haven't spoken about yet, which falls also into this, is the um, is the role of well miasmatic diseases. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is what is your understanding, or where do they fit? Yes, you, if you've seen the the schemes for radar opus, you've seen that there are two um, groups. I group mm -hmm. them in the miasmatic uh, nozzle prescriptions, and then, like, let's say the nozzle prescriptions and the miasmatic um, ones. I consider I use Sankaran's. Um, more extended list of miasms. So he has 10. It's not always sure whether he incorporates SORA or not. If he does, we have 10. If he doesn't, we have 9. So that's uh, with the acute miasm included as a, a chronic state of being in an acute miasm. Mm -hmm. And the classical miasms, uh, it's the SORA <coughs> and the syphilis. Then the two that are added after Hahnemann's death, uh, tuberculinum, tu tubercular miasm and cancer miasm. And then Sankaran added a few more. He added the acute, the one between acute and um, uh, uh, Sora, is the typhoid between Sora and psychosis is ring war, and he added leptomycin between uh, psychosis and syphilis. So he um, he explained it very well with a, a, a nice image of a person. Um, going on a trip and his car breaks down and then the possible reactions so he calls them coping up mechanisms mm -hmm. how do you see reality how do you perceive reality and how do you react how do you cope with your perceived reality and so we have this uh, list with keywords which is very mm -hmm. easy to use so we have acute of course is panic which is not difficult we have sora which is the a hopeful idea that with effort you will overcome your problem mm -hmm. and we have the in between typhoid which is crisis and etc etc so you can look in the list and to me if i can boil down the whole case to nothing else but really nothing else than the keyword then he gets a nozzle mm -hmm. a static nozzle and i've seen those cases like patients talking for Two hours, whatever you ask, the answer is change. Even if they don't say it literally, but they will have an, a need. It's a condition to be okay. It's always a survival mechanism, a need for change. And since it's, it's a tubercular myosin, that means it's potentially fatal. So it's, it's a very deep need. It's a need that is there day and night. Not only confronted with the problem, but always there. And I even had a patient who went to another homeopath before for a chronic problem and she always aggravated after the remedy and then went back to her original state so she never improved mm -hmm. yeah. and she said and she went there for years i mean for six years or seven years her father finally brought her to me like try another homeopath you know yeah and you this can never be a tuberculosis yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an encounter keynote Absolutely, we have in the book go from one doctor to the other. But when I question her, like why did she stay so long? She says, whenever I take remedy, something happens. Mm -hmm. Something changes. I said, yeah, what changes? Yeah, my feeling in my belly changes, my intestines, my digestion. So even a change for the worse was better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. As long as it's a change, it doesn't have to be a change for the better. It just has to be something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And another tuberculinum case I saw, basically, she couldn't do anything for two hours in a row. She uh -huh, was a student, yeah. student homeopathy. She couldn't listen to the lessons all day. Why not? Because it's too long. So what do you do? You, you, you travel so far. You paid so much. She said, nothing particularly. I go out. I, I make a walk. Then I eat something. Then I go in again. And after an hour, I get restless. I go out. I make a walk. So <laughs> her whole day was... I just have to change. That's do something. Why? You to him, That's your answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. Okay. Um, so, following those keywords, we could identify the miasmatic, 
no sort vital remedy cases. If there's nothing else, yeah. If all the examples they give you, all the different levels they give you, is only this. Yeah. Cancer is chaos is fatal. If you if your case boils down to this and the, there's no plants, there's no animal, <laughs> there's no mineral showing up because it's also uh, um, a pointer that the others are lacking, that they're missing. You don't have any yeah. any symptom that you can refer to one of these kingdoms. So we can make a plant of it when a patient does give you a sensation. You cannot make an animal of it if they don't give you a sens sensation yeah. of animals. Yeah, I see. Right. So these two things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we spoke about the further pointers to recognize the the bacteria cases and also what the mind of a bacteria is like or how how it frustrates us in a consultation and why mm -hmm. and also what it can be easily or what it's similar to what it can be confused with like yeah. parasites or other parasites and uh, differences with viruses and also more specific details about viruses as a thing <laughs> as a species or whatever it is yeah i don't know if it's a special group up a group apart but maybe it is yeah and finally <clears throat> disease states chronic or acute states of diseases that turn into chronic perceptions mm -hmm. of reality and uh, which we refer to as miasm or miasmatic remedies so in the next episodes uh, I would like to continue speaking about families or groups of remedies. We have a couple more that I'd like to cover with you. So thank you very much for this one. It's my pleasure again. <laughs> I look forward to speaking to you soon. Next Friday. Next Friday. See you then. Yeah. Bye. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.